Hi, I'm Mike Phillips. Uh, I'm the director of IDAT, and this is the BioWASP project, which is part of our operating systems uh, initiative here at IDAT. IDAT's mission with the, its operating systems is to collect data on human activity, uh, reveal the complex processes that are happening through various visualizations and sonifications, uh, to create instruments or, or um, provocative prototypes, of, as for instance with the systems we developed for the biological operating system, so that people can take responsibility for their impact on the world um, and then use this material as a way of uh, collaborating uh, for a broader creative practice. We operate very much a kind of hacking environment here. It's not a particularly useful word, but uh, it, it allows us to adopt a set of behaviors ourselves which uh, take technologies that exist and create little intermediary technologies which bridge the gap. So for instance, we haven't developed the yo-yo board, which is the uh, main piece of hardware apart from the Arduino board, and we haven't developed the breathing strap or the, the heart rate monitor. What we've done is we've put these things together and then created an online interface which allows this data to be broadcast up to that environment and then various triggers to be set up which allow RSS feeds or uh, SMS text to be sent uh, to then trigger other kinds of activities. So essentially it's, it's looking at and hacking into the APIs that exist and creating new ones uh, which we can then use to control uh, and access different bits of information. So we've been working with uh, four artists, uh, Simon Simon from, from Slingshot, uh, we're working with Hannah and Katie to develop or co-develop uh, a set of tools which uh, are open and uh, we'll be uh, providing uh, ways of downloading and, and using the software as well as the hardware uh, to um, explore the body and our relationship with it. Uh, these tools uh, will allow people to perform, uh, to capture data and to then publish it online. Uh, this is going to allow us to uh, redistribute this as an open piece of hardware and software uh, for anybody to use, uh, whether they're artists or, or scientists or, or um, school children. My name is Katie Connor, I'm an artist. Um, I come from a background of making film and video work, but in the last few years I've started to develop my work in terms of uh, a more interdisciplinary practice and um, considering data visualisation, um, scientific forms of imaging. I've worked previously with data visualisation that's generated um, by um, satellite networks, so a purely kind of generative piece that's generated by machines. Um, Previously as well I've worked with materials such as um, medical images, x-rays and ultrasound. So I was really interested in this project in bringing these two areas together in um, producing visuals that aren't necessarily what we see with the lens or with the eye but come from the body and what I'd like to do is align the genital rhythms of the body with those of machines, um, such as the GPS system. I think the workshops for me were crucial in how the project developed. Um, beforehand, I was very much thinking about a screen-based uh, piece of work. I've worked a lot with screen-based work generally, and although I'm interested in different sizes and scales of screen, from um, immersive projections through to handheld screens, I think. Um, over the last few months I've been really interested in how data itself can translate from screen-based images into tactile, tangible forms. Um, so for me, that period of development was really important to think about how these visualisations could develop further into um, more sculptural pieces or even pieces that could then be worn again by the body that generates the data. Hello, my name's Simon Evans. I'm an artist and game designer and businessman. Um, I, I do a bunch of things, but kind of mainly I'm a partner in Slingshot, which is a street games production company. We create, produce, 
games ranging from screen-based uh, mobile app games to mass participatory events. Um, kind of the central thing to what we do is it always involves places, physical places, and other people. We've done in the last four or five years we've produced something like 80 games. We're best known for I think for two things: Igfest, which is the festival of interesting games we run each year in Bristol, which I think is probably the largest festival of its type in the world. Another thing is 2.8 hours later, which started out as a headline game at Igfest a year ago, and we turned it from a kind of collaborative. DIY type experience into a professionalised ticketed touring show and it's the success of that's kind of really taken us by surprise and sort of gone massive. We weren't particularly interested in the project at first, we were a bit sceptical to be honest, both of us. I mean, I work closely with um, Simon Johnson, even though I think on the particular one I, I've sort of led on it. Um, once we chatted about it and sat down with the rest of the people, other artists in the workshop, and I suppose the guys from IDAP, um, and it was kind of clear that there was, I mean, it's a pretty powerful thing. I mean, the, the prototype that's come out is amazing that we can associate biodata, you know, pulse, um, chest expansion, GABA skin response. We can um, associate that with location, we can communicate when certain thresholds have been here, we can trigger that, you know, have that data trigger stuff. It's quite an amazing thing. Isn't it? And, I was thinking about how we could use that um, to advance a couple of things in our, in my, or our practice at Slingshot. What I'm really pleased about is that we're able to use the um, IDATS implemented on web service that enables us to trigger um, SMS messages. Now, we use SMS quite a lot for various reasons. <coughs> um, it's really light and bandwidth. So if you're, um, for instance, you can send a whole text message in the same um, uh, same number of bytes as it takes just to send the header in an HTTP request. So it's quite super efficient, it's, it's built in low level into the mobile phone networks. What, what I hope we can do with this prototype is write the player's body onto the city. So at kind of early days yet, and we've not really done any serious testing, but a couple of uh, early ideas might be something like um, you go in enter a street in the game and there are light, the lights are on but they only stay on as long as you hold your breath. As soon as you start breathing the lights go off and you know, monsters come out, whatever. Okay, I'm Hannah Wood, I'm a multi-platform and transmedia writer which means that I tell stories that move naturally across multiple platforms so real world, mobile, online um, Put simply, it's taking a story world and fragmenting it across different places, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, so that you explore the entire story by putting the pieces of the jigsaw together that are found on different platforms, but that each of those jigsaw puzzle elements are kind of self-contained stories in their own right, and you can join them on their own, but if you put them together, you get a, a grander, larger story world and a deeper, more enriched story experience. Um, and my work is in mobile technology, film, um, games, real world platforms, print, um, and using them all as storytelling devices. Okay, so what interested me about body data is that it's a really intimate and personal way to integrate a player into a narrative so that it can deepen the relationship between player and story. It's an intriguing idea that a person's body can become a storytelling platform and be an integral part of what happens to a plot and how it develops. So for example, you could write a narrative that say if a person's heart rate got to a certain level when they were in a certain location at a certain time, then it would trigger a tweet that tells them something new about a character. But if it was at a different level, it might send a text message that would reveal something else about a different character. So your bodily interaction with the story and with your bodily data could change the way that a story develops or plays out. So the reason that it's relevant to my practice using body data is that um, as a writer and storyteller I'm interested in anything that tells a compelling and emotional story. So your own body data, even though it's a stream of numbers and seems quite scientific, if you set it in new contexts and reinterpret it then it can tell a compelling story about who that person is and where they're from and what they're capable of 
And for me personally, it was really interesting the first time I strapped on the prototype and saw my own body data streaming across a phone screen because it was very alien from my own experience of my body. And if you could take those numbers and then put them into a story so that when they, when a certain number happens, a new thing triggers, a new part of a story triggers, say you were in a, in a game where you had to save somebody and you got to a certain place and you had to get your heart rate up to a certain level to unlock a door to release them or something or, or to send a tweet that told you that there was a, an enemy on a corner that you then had to run away from, then that feedback of your bodily data into a story is, is quite an interesting dynamic and how it will inform my work is I've been working on a multitude of platforms like there are endless platforms to use Skype and Facebook and various social networks and mobile apps and different softwares and online and real world but taking the body itself as a platform is a really interesting new idea and especially what goes on inside and extracting that and fitting that into a narrative has a kind of different and powerful resonance and one of the challenges of transmedia storytelling is really getting an audience to participate in a kind of exciting way when you personalize the experience like that then I think you've got more of a hook um, and more of a way to embed a player really personally within a narrative which is what you what you want to do to make it as powerful as possible okay. hi I'm, uh, I'm Ray Jones I'm a professor of health informatics um, in the Faculty of Health Education and Society at the University of Plymouth and my area of research is in e-health, uh, mainly in patients using the computer to get information or to communicate with each other. So I'm interested in things like um, tailoring information to patients, patients access to their own records. I'm interested in digital health inequalities, so um, in um, making sure that everybody can get access to and use possibilities of the internet for their health. That's the sort of thing I, I specifically do. Um, I got involved in this project because um, not mainly because Mike Phillips asked me, but because I'm also interested in, in looking at interdisciplinary work. So, um, for example, I'm involved in a, in a project that we have uh, based in our in our faculty with older people, um, looking at connectivity in all its sort of senses. So this project is a multidisciplinary, um, interdisciplinary study with artists, with geographers, with social scientists um, and my bit of it is, is looking at how the internet can be used to try and uh, connect older people between different areas of the country and between different sectors. How can this project be applied in the future, what we're doing now? Um, I mean we need to wait and see.